In this video I'm going to show you how to configure usernames and permissions to log into the Data Hub WebView program. To do this we need to open the um, Cogent Data Hub properties window. If I right click on the icon and choose properties that's the same as double clicking on the icon. It'll bring up the properties window. What I need to do is to go to the security settings and then click on configure permissions. This gives us an interface where we can configure individual users and groups of users. To start with I'm going to configure a group of users that will all inherit the same properties or the same permissions, sorry. So I'm going to call these my operators group and any anybody that I uh, any users that I create and assign them to the operators group will inherit the common set of uh, permissions that I'm going to define. So for operators, in order for um, people in this group to view real-time data from the data hub, they're going to need to make they're going to need to connect and make read and write connections with the data hub. Um, but we're going to keep the permissions quite restrictive for um, the operators group. Basically we're going to give them HTTP connect permissions because that's how the WebView application connects to the Data Hub web server. And within this WebView category this, is, this defines how the user can actually interact with the WebView application itself. If we want them to use WebView we always say that they can connect but for our operators we don't want to give them the ability to create pages we just want to, them to be able to, to view pages in this case that's view pages they've created but more likely view pages that other people have created we want them to be able to view the online help and we also want to give them permissions to click on links within web view pages that might redirect them to other internet sites this would be helpful if you have um, videos or help files located on other servers. But that's basically the, the set of permissions I want to give to operators so that when they log in they get to view pages but they can't necessarily create or delete pages. So if I come across now to the users tab I'm going to add a user here called Fred. I'm going to say Fred's password is his name Fred and you see that the system has created a password hash now this is a uh, an encrypted key the password that I put in here is never stored within the system so if your user actually forgets his password you cannot retrieve it all you can do is assign him a new password now we're going to say that Fred is a member of the operators group and you'll see that when I assign Fred to operators he inherits all of the um, permissions of that group. Now I'll quickly go back and I'm going to create another group of users. Now these are the page designers. So I'm going to call these designers. And again, I want to give them the ability to connect, read and write live data with the data hub. I also want to give them permissions uh, to connect HTTP so that WebView can connect to the server. Um, we are going to give these users pretty much all of the permissions we can for creating pages and saving pages, deleting pages and controls, um, viewing pages obviously, the ability to edit and modify those pages, also to view, edit, save and delete pages from uh, that have been created by other users. Um, we want to do the same thing and basically give them permissions to edit, save, delete controls that have been specifically built by other users. Uh, again we'll give them the ability to view the online help and connect to uh, internet sites through um, hypertext links or, or uh, Hi, um, yes, hypertext links within WebView pages. Um, we'll give them the ability to change themes, change the options in the program, um, view troubleshooting information, and also configure the trace settings. 
Now, basically, what we've done is given designers free reign. We've given them all of the permissions um, to work within WebView. So if I go back over and create a user called Dave, for example, Dave the designer, I'm going to say Dave's password is his name again. And you'll see he's been given a hash word, uh, a pass hash word. I'm going to say Dave is a member of the designer group. So Dave inherits all of the permissions for members in the designers group. So if I apply those changes, they're written to um, the permissions database within the data hub. Now I can show you the, uh, the login procedure for that. If we go to WebView and actually launch the WebView application, I can first log in as our our operator Fred and his password is Fred. And you see when I log in I'm immediately presented with what we call the start page which is a page that the designers have uh, configured to be the first page presented to users when they are uh, when they log into the system. Now this page is live so that um, Fred will, can click on pages and freely navigate around and see all of the example pages that we've got linked to uh, linked to this home page and everything is fully interactive so he in effect can read and write data um, with the data hub he can also launch um, links to external sites and what we'll do now actually is go back and show you the difference if we log in as our designer. Um, to do that I'll press F5 to refresh the browser and in effect bring up the login page again and instead of De Fred this time we're going to log in as Dave and the password was Dave and you'll immediately see the differences because Dave has all of the permissions to edit and create pages, we log in and we're given the designer interface. Again, um, we are presented with the, the start page that is defined by uh, the developer. So that's shown you using the Data Hub properties window how we can configure user permissions and user groups to specify both operators and designers and give them different levels of permission once they log in to the Data Hub WebView application.